very very good afternoon. Can we take off? So I, before taking off, I welcome you all once again uh, to be here in this uh, beautiful rainy day. Yes? And we will try to do some basic of what we I don't know if some of you have time. Uh, one friend of mine, uh, Professor Partha Sarthi Mitra from Sai Institute of Mikrati would be giving a colloquium level talk at the elementary level at 3.30 in the seminar from Commentary Room on the parity and time reversal uh, in the fundamental interaction. It's a part of your quantum mechanics one, parity and time reversal. Okay. So parity, you know, it transforms. It changes really a vector A into vector minus A. Or uh, just the mirror symmetry, okay, the right hand looks like a left hand and left hand looks like a right hand in front of the mirror. That is the simplest example of the parity the symmetry, okay. So it's a mirror symmetry. Right? Uh, it's a discrete symmetry and the other one is the time reversal uh, uh, symmetry. So, uh, I, if I happen to have time, I will lecture on these two. Uh, one of my favorite topics, symmetry, continuous and discrete symmetry in, in physics. You also have them in classical mechanics, you also have them in quantum mechanics, and you also have them in field theory. Okay, so just like the particle. Uh, if you have time, you are welcome to attend that lecture and future. Alright, so we get back to what we were doing before. Uh, could you please show me your notes to, so that I have an idea what we have done before? We have done only up to this place. Oh, do I have time? Okay. Anybody could give me an idea? This is your university. Okay. So that's good. Fine. All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, let me briefly recap and then we get to the point where the mic is stop. So we, I always, always like to redress my past little bit behind where we were really we, there uh, during the last lecture so that nothing is getting you. Alright? So, you see, we have been discussing for quite some time the concept of uh, base pairs uh, of the basis vectors which could be used as the eigen pairs and the base pairs for expanding and arbitrary discrete vector. And this we have been doing for the discrete basis as well as for the continuous basis. Okay? So in the discrete basis we had assumed that if an operator A has eigen value to a prime, k double prime, k triple prime and so on, then these cat states represented by k prime, k double prime, etc. could be used as the basis vectors to expand the n-dimensional complex vector space. Okay. And for that, we have the favorite properties that need to be satisfied by these basis vectors. They have to be uh, orthogonal, they have to be at uh, unit length, which means completeness property. The two properties put together, uh, they are called orthonormality conditions. So they have to be orthonormal and they have to satisfy the closure property. Alright? And now, we could also go from the discrete basis to the uh, another concept called continuous space. So here uh, we took a rather general general example 
which loaded the operator by psi and its eigenvalue is by psi prime, psi prime, psi prime, etc. And we say that psi when x on the state at psi prime gives me back the same state vector psi prime multiplied by a number psi prime which is the eigenvalue of this operator psi. However, now this psi prime is a continuous vector. Instead of being a discrete variable, now it's a continuous variable. Then we have taken two special cases of this the coordinate configuration basis, coordinate basis x, x prime, and the momentum basis. Alright? And we have written down, we have seen the analogy, it works perfectly, except that the Kronecker delta that used to appear for the discrete basis would now get replaced by the Dirac distribution function. Is this alright? Yes. Is this alright? You see, any complicated mathematics, unless you are able to express it in simple words, would be meaningless. You would never get its meaning. So we need to be able to express and understand the things in physical words. Okay? Alright? Have I summarized the thing properly? Yes? I, I hope you are also reading at home. Uh, the same material, alright. So, uh, just to have this x, no, no, I put it out. This is good. So, x, x prime, this is x prime, x prime, and here x prime, x double prime is correct and of course you have Right. 
by alpha of infinity. So, in terms of your wave functions, you see, we are gradually establishing a, an equivalence of the so-called abstract formulation of error with your earlier wave function approach. It lies, you can call it wave mechanics. So you see, in this approach, your wave mechanics that got unified with the so-called matrix mechanics because you represent your operators in terms of matrices. Now you represent these inner products in terms of the overlap integral. This is called the overlap integral in wave mechanics. Okay? All right. So you see, in this very approach of the Dirac's abstract formulation of quantum mechanics, the quantum mechanics different approaches like wave mechanics, matrix mechanics, wave function approach, and this, uh, all these approaches they get unified. Okay, that's the idea, that's the motivation for doing all this. Is this all right? So, and everything else is a subset of this thing. This is a bigger set. Everything else is a subset of this. Okay. Whatever we have studied so far, and you know the physical meaning of this thing, this is the transition. And three groups that is say alpha after we have everything done. How this is the beta or the same, okay? And I can understand it either in terms of the configuration, space, wave function, and the joint, as well as the momentum space, function, and the other joint. Is this fine? So, everything stands to uh, explain. <coughs> and what else? You can, you can, uh, I think I already told you this thing I must have told you, but let me yes, that not that if you have this thing psi alpha of x prime that I did in one dimension, so this is x prime alpha and it's like in the expanded, let us say summation over a prime, x prime, a prime, and a prime. Alpha and this is your A prime alpha, this is A prime, you know the expansion coefficient in the in the in the state basis and this guy is going to be your UA of X prime. This is the eigen function. So you can write it as summation to the A prime, the A prime, U A prime, A prime. This is the eigen function of the operator A with the eigen value A prime. Alright? So, <coughs> all this is fine. Okay? This is like I can, I can redo it. X prime A, A prime, and this is your X prime, A prime, A prime. Here I am this value here, and this A prime comes out. So this is a prime, u a prime, x prime. So you see that this guy, which is a prime is coming out, this is the same object. A prime times this part x prime a prime. So this is equal to this. So you know that this guy is the eigen function of this operator A, the eigen A prime. Okay. So everything is very well connected and can be very easily understood. Is this okay? Is this alright? So we could now go ahead. Uh, let me try to establish some more, uh, some more uh, relations. I need some space. Could I put and all of these things? Whenever you like, wherever you like, you can promote these vectors to n dimensions or three dimensions, okay? Alright? So of course, if you have this product uh, in three dimensions, then this is equivalent to the product of uh, that, that delta of x minus y is delta q x minus y is equal to delta of x1 minus y1 into delta of x2 minus y2 into delta of x3 minus y2 and so on. Is it clear? So 
so for example, here, this is three-dimensional, then I have to use a function. This could also be written as this, then I put three here, then I don't put the vectors. Then I assign that it's okay in three dimensions by saying this, I am not sure whether I am talking about three dimensions or n dimensions. Okay? But the idea, let us say they are the three vector, then you have this and then their components. Okay? Is this okay? You, you must work out some exercises on, on these things. Okay? And I would really not have time also to make problems here. So for that I recommend you to attend the classes of tutorial classes brought by Dr. Sarmendu Sarkar. He is very, very bright colleague of mine. Okay? So please do not miss his classes. Uh, I see that many students take it uh, rather casually. I, I would expect the number of students in my one particular class to be something like 150. And I don't know, it could be only 100, something like 100. So there are these 50 guys missing. And they would also be missing in the final results of the examination. So I'm never surprised by that because 50 are missing in the class. Out of 150, then 50 must be also missing in the result. So, uh, the, 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 there is no shortcut to work, there is no shortcut to work. You have to come here, uh, attend the lectures, then you will be you never get this in the office. Believe me, as a student, I never used to miss even my single class. And I was always doctor of the university, right from here, since the first year I and that, that is how you should take the things, you should take them very seriously. Okay? I mean, now tomorrow many of you may be missing and some more will be coming in. So, if you lose things here and there, in emergency case, it is okay. Today I have a guest from Sai Institute. He conducted the dialogue of one of my PhD students uh, right away. From 11 to 12, it is still there and I am taking my class. You can very easily skip these things, it is very bad. So, 100 students are supposed to be waiting for me, I must come. Yes? So, both of both the, both the parties, they must take it seriously, government is a good part. Fine, so... Now, the idea is, I would like to go from computational space to momentum space and from momentum space to computational space through your support for your transform. So in a way, we re-derive our well-known uh, transformation result, okay? Within the, within the language of the graphs, but I make that notice. That's the idea. So, Is this all right? 
fine. So uh, let me consider this function, but I consider it for in one dimension, then you can always just like it. So uh, I take f prime, p prime, and I apply p prime to this, then I can have minus i of f prime, then I have f prime, then f prime, p prime. If you like, if you can, you can represent this by, let us say, by, by, then you have the first order differential equation in this transformation function. This is the first order differential equation in the transformation function, for the transformation function, and I would integrate it as, let us say, p prime, y is equal to minus, I have the extra, then y is over the x prime. That you have to remember that x prime and p prime here are continuous variables. Okay? You have to always remember they are continuous variables, not discrete. So you could have differentiation and integrations with respect to them. That is what we have been having. Okay? Because they are continuous variables. You won't do that for discrete variables. Okay? All right? But you can do it for continuous variables. So fine. And this, then I could write this. Uh, plus this equals to 0 or I could write d by by dx prime uh, plus d prime by dx cross by or I could make it minus Prime by the cross uh, by the And this is your first order differential equation, correct? This is your first order differential equation. You can rearrange it yourself, okay? Don't worry. You can rearrange it yourself. So this is your, and then in solution, I could write and by for some constant, first order differential equation, there must be one constant of integration. Of course, this constant of integration here would be, would be, Normalization. Right. Okay, so this is this times exponential of, I can remember from my first year there has been a minus in this guy was p divided by dx plus p y equals to 0 that integral of minus p dx. So this is minus iota p cross p prime by x cross x prime. And this is equal to n exponential of uh, I got this line, x 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 line, I just can leave the expression here and so uh, x prime, x double prime, this has to be delta of x prime minus x double prime. Now this I can write as dc prime. And then p prime, p prime, and then double. Okay. So I have used the closure property once. Okay. I have used the closure property once. And now x prime, p prime is my transformation function. So you write down 1 by, by, by the cross exponential of pi. P prime, x prime, x prime, and this is P prime, x prime, so it's arbitrary joint. So again, 1 by y by x cross times exponential, but it's arbitrary joint minus i of P prime. X double prime, this is x double prime. 
I want my my to go. Okay. So I can I can sum it up uh, divided by 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 the cross and so on both the and then you have exponential. I can put it together. So this is I T prime, but I also T prime by the cross times x prime minus double prime. All right. All right. Yes. And what about what about the oh that's the point that's the point you see what I have done is uh, I'm not supposed to do this I'm supposed to write down and 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 start okay and then I start okay so and then I start of modern square so this I am to remove. And this is more than square, like this. Is. Okay. Now this has to be equated to that. There are, there are different functions. So very good. This has to be. This is equal to. Uh, this is equal to more than square. Try to find the cross times delta of x prime. And therefore, this guy has equal to 1 and this is equal to 